Why too many are worried about SLS versus Starliner? How is SpaceX saving the US rocket industry? Well, just hang on there till the end of the script. I'll rip off everything about this subject line by line and word by word. First, do you realize what the big similarity between SLS and Starliner is? Former Ames director Pete Worden described the SLS system as a self-licking ice cream cone in 1992. That's nearly 30 years ago. The picture here is that all the key constituencies with power and money are very satisfied with SLS. It provides the operational cover necessary to move vast sums of public wealth into favored hands. Indeed, actually flying the rocket's pretty risky in terms of the existing scheme because it might fail. and That would end all the good times. But somehow, the human space exploration budget has been favored with this sort of unwinnable grift, with the result that yet another generation of idealistic engineers has aged into retirement. Most of the moonwalkers have died of old age, and a basic moon base or Mars base seems more out of reach than ever. Well, it doesn't have to be this way. Endless reports by toothless government and agency watchdogs pointing out the obvious. The rocket's expensive, it's unsafe, it'll never work properly. One of them even found that NASA hid nearly $800 million in cost to avoid a congressionally mandated budget cap by spending money earmarked for future development programs. Just try that in your annual tax filing and see how far you get. Actually, don't. There's a word for this, and it rhymes with broad. Remember, even if it actually was fast and safe to reuse shuttle hardware, even if the program was well managed, it would still only manage an SLS flight every year or two, and it would cost $4.1 billion. This doesn't include any development cost, which will total $93 billion by 2025. It's incredible! Can you imagine showing up for your day job and telling your boss that your salary is now a secret, but at least three times higher than the day before, and that your work product was going to be a decade late? Even the people whose only job is to know exactly how much the SLS cost apparently don't know. The only metrics that matter for big rockets and humans in space are dollars per T and T per year. By an unbelievably huge margin, the SLS has mismanaged itself into the wrong end of the field on both axes, with a rocket that costs maybe 20 times more per ton. And due to its appallingly low flight rate, delivers less mass to orbit in a year than SpaceX can in a fortnight in 2021. The SpaceX Starship is designed to deliver on order a million tons to orbit a year for about $100,000 a kilogram. That's 15,000 times the stuff for one five hundredth the cost. I have no doubt the Starship development program will have its surprises and setbacks, but they've already flown to 12.5 kilometers, roughly as high as the stack of $100 bills already spent on SLS would reach. Even if Starship comes in at the 10x the design cost, it'll still be 50 times cheaper than the competition. Would you spend $20,000 on a car or a million dollars on the same car? It's hard to imagine and, and make an even meaningful comparison here. NASA is clearly the one to blame, but is this unique to the agency? No, it's on brand for Boeing. Boeing is the prime contractor, and they've made lots of money on screwing SLS. This big company was once synonymous with innovation, elite achievement, and flawless execution. By most accounts, the 777 was a master class in program management. With around 280 separate subsystem teams performing decentralized design and optimization to bring a plane into production on time and on schedule. With this enviable legacy built up over decades of hard work, Boeing jealously safeguarded the institutional knowledge they had hard won, right? No. They bought out McDonnell Douglas, their previous competitor, whose passenger aircraft had failed in the market due to questionable accounting decisions recounted with admirable thoroughness by John Hart Smith. So naturally, they installed this failed executive team to the top of their organization who then pushed out Boeing's existing management, moved headquarters to Chicago for no reason, stovepiped the organization, pushed about 10,000 experienced technicians and engineers into early retirement, embarked on the enormously ambitious 787 project, pushed design work out to about 50 subcontractors, and acted surprised when it failed egregiously, in exactly the same way as it had for McDonnell before and Douglas Aviation before them. 
after blowing $50 billion on a $5 billion program. The 787 limps into service, only to suffer a series of agonizingly embarrassing failures. In every case, their subcontractors had made profit in direct proportion to how much value they delivered or failed to deliver to the project, whose outsourcing had spectacularly failed to diversify risk. Boeing learned their lesson and rehired the sort of in-house talent necessary to once again vertically integrate the construction of advanced aircraft, right? Of course not. Instead, they squandered billions in lobbying regulatory capture and self-dealing stock buybacks. Then they fumbled development on the 737 MAX, which killed 346 people. The F-35, not the Prime, the KC-46, the Starliner, and the SLS. Especially in the case of Starliner, untested outsourced software was so abysmal that extreme public system tests failed in every way that turned out to be stupidly obvious. And in this case, the software could not agree which way was up. What sort of prime contractor flies untested third-party software on NASA's commercial crew test flight? Should we even act surprised that Boeing even fumbled some sketchy procurement inside advice from Doug Lavero, costing him his career while still getting nowhere near the lunar lander contract? Boeing has lost the plot. All organizations get to the point where their internal processes and systems are decaying faster than any sort of intervention can save them like leprosy or necrotizing fasciitis. The patient still lives, but their days are numbered. Is it any surprise then that Boeing runs the SLS program, bamboozles friendly NASA program management into giving them most, if not all, of the award fees, bribes and lobbies the crap out of Congress to keep the gravy flowing, then delivers half-baked hardware six years late that can't even pass a sandbag PR test firing in front of the new presidential transition team? What a shame. After all, the bad news is according to Brian Wang, a co-founder of a startup and fundraiser for high potential early stage companies. If SLS slips into 2023 and Starliner does not get considered safe enough to transport astronauts, then Boeing could be the prime contractor for over $30 billion of failing space programs. If it happens, we're not sure whether they'll be able to revive the company, but meanwhile, China has passed its century of humiliation. The world's most populous country is showing that it is a space power that shouldn't be underestimated, with a series of remarkable success in recent years. As a worthy note, they're always willing to learn or copy new technology from other countries. America will soon be surpassed by China. The only remaining U.S. solution is still SpaceX. SpaceX, the underdog, they became the pioneer of the space industry, becoming a pillar for the U.S. and NASA on the ISS and other areas of space, including orbit, satellites, the moon, Mars, and beyond. In a little more than two years, SpaceX has surpassed the total number of astronauts launched into orbit by China, whose human spaceflight program goes back to 2003. And in the time Crew Dragon has been operational, it's exceeded even the Russian Soyuz vehicle in terms of the total number of people flying into space during that period. The company is even developing a more powerful rocket named Starship, as we said before. Hopefully, NASA and the U.S. government will create the best conditions for Starship to go to orbit and save the U.S. space travel system. Well, that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Hey, don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section because your support, your ideas, that's the motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we will see you next time.